Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. Today, I'm speaking with Yasmin Mohammed. Yasmin is an author uh, of the book Unveiled. Uh, it's Unveiled, How Western Liberals Empower Radical Islam. And she's also the founder of Free Hearts and Free Minds, or Free Hearts, Free Minds, uh, an organization that helps uh, questioning and ex-Muslims in uh, Muslim-majority countries uh, get counseling. Hey, Yasmin, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Obeid. It's always mm -hmm. a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, it's great. Always great talking to you. I just wanted to actually I asked you to come back on if we could talk about um, how the Islam left alliance is kind of finally exposed and about stuff that you and I have been talking about since, I guess, 2015. Um, yeah. And just, you know, so I just wanted to you know, bring you on about that because obviously with, you know, all the university students, everyone going chanting pro Hamas garbage mm -hmm. um and then the way the university presidents just recently like the three of them what was it MIT Harvard and Penn that's right and they just couldn't even say that calling for genocide was wrong mm -hmm. and it just because they're ideologically captured um <clears throat> so yeah I mean if you want to like if you feel vindicated or if you just want to start with okay like where are we right now yeah yeah, I've had a, quite a few people ask me that, like, oh, you were Cassandra all these years. Do you now feel like, oh, finally, you morons can see? And I was like, mm -hmm. I do, but I feel bad. Like, I feel it's not like this is not a happy it it, it doesn't never feels good to be mm -hmm. right about something horrible. You know, I'm sad yeah. uh, for all of these morons that <laughs> that finally can are, are forced to see it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I. I because for us, we watched this happen in slow motion. It was like watching a slow motion car crash. We could see it happening. We were like pointing out things that are dangerous, that are going to be problematic, that are heading in the wrong direction. So it was like a slow thing for us. But for these guys, they're just like living in la la land. And then all of a sudden, they're watching people scream gas the Jews with, you know, the Sydney Opera House in the background. And they're like, what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. You know, what just happened? So to them, it's like this immediate shock um, to a lot of people, you and I obviously included, but there were a lot of people screaming about this for a long time. And we were all demonized. We were all regarded as alarmists, uh, right wing bigots um whatever you know any kind of whatever mm. slur they wanted to throw at us to shut us up uh very rarely were we getting our voices out in mainstream media um you know it, it was it was a difficult slog to to try and say what we had to say a couple of years ago uh, you know my book it was so hard to get my book published with a mainstream publisher they kept on saying like, oh, this isn't the time or this is too dangerous or we don't want to invoke Islamophobia and things like that. Um, you know, and now I'm being contacted by the same agents and publishers who turned me down. One of them being J.K. Rowling's publisher, Neil Blair, contacting me saying, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like now <laughs> now we can see what you were saying now it would like now people it's it's not a it's not a warning anymore now it's it's happened you know it's too late at this point so the question now is what do we do like it, it it's it, it's kind of a relief that the filth has been uncovered because now we can start cleaning it up but that's what makes me nervous because this is such a like we're on such a precipice right now because if we don't clean it up properly, if we don't move in the right direction at this point, it's going to all like we're fucked. You know what I mean? Like we're, it's, it's not, it's going to be a very quick transition. Um, in some places it's gotten so bad that I don't even know what the answer is. Um, but I think yeah. Okay. Places we, like America. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say I think that there's still a chance to unring this bell in a lot of places, and I think that's what needs to be done immediately. Yeah. Okay. Unringing the bell. I mean, I I agree with you. I mean, 2016 was when we should have started unraveling yeah. this. But anyways, my concern, and it's it's been my biggest concern since I got back and since I started seeing all this insanity, is like 
okay, you're going to have an overcorrection. You're going to have an equal and opposite yeah. reaction to what you're doing. Yeah. And then the last few, the last couple of years, I actually, I should say since about 2018, where I really started looking into all this woke garbage and started reading all this stuff and seeing how pervasive it was. I started thinking about like, there was a, a Hitchens would always talk about a man for all seasons. And then he would talk about one scene in particular when it, where Thomas Moore's uh, speaking with, I don't know if he's like the, the inquisitor for the crown or whatever, but he, he's the one, he's going to be the prosecutor for the crown for Thomas Moore and this guy Roper. And so Thomas Moore says to him, like, yo, if you, you'd, you'd burn down the law to catch the devil. And guy Roper says, yep, I'd burn down every single law in England. And so more than ask him, like, what are you going to do then when the devil turns around? That's where we're at. Yeah. Like in, in 2019 or the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, when the CDC put out the recommendations that, you know, vaccine give out, be given out by race, not by mm -hmm. who needs it the most. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they pulled it and everyone's like, oh, see, it's fine. I'm like, no, you idiots. It, there was a reason why that decision was made and you're not looking at it. Now we've got doctors who, who are being forced to put the, like DEI oaths above the Hippocratic oath. Yeah. You know, like um people are just finally like I like not one women's organization put out a statement about the rape that Hamas committed on Israeli women until they were shamed into doing it and then it was like a half assed um statement. Like our institutions are so fucked. Yeah. You know, like and it okay, it goes by degrees of which country you're in. But I think like the United States and Canada, especially, mm -hmm. we're we're too far gone. Yeah, Canada, I mean, no doubt. Yeah, I, like, what are you going to do at a university like Harvard? Let's just say, right? It's a public. It's not a public university. It's private. So yes, they don't have to you know follow government, but they get government funding. Whatever we saw, we saw what the president did the other day. You know, she couldn't condemn genocide. Now there's 700 uh, faculty members who signed a letter who say, we don't want anything to happen to her. Like, we don't want her fired. I'm sorry, but they're like, oh, you're going to be stifling academic freedom. It's like, academic freedom has been stifled since, like, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it started slowly, and it kept growing and growing and growing. And you guys did nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that's, that's one of my biggest things. Like, there's people I respect. Um, Nicholas Christakis, okay? I disagree with him on some things. For the most part, I respected what he said until this whole thing happened and where students were protesting Hamas. He put out a tweet that said, um, for over 12 years, I saw freshmen being separated into quote unquote trainings and, you know, it being done by race. Who would have thought it would have left to this? Really? Led to this. I'm like, you saw this for 12 years and you did nothing. Like you did absolutely nothing. Where did you think it was going to lead? When I, when I, yeah, but and when I when I mentioned something about that, he's like, "Oh, I've been doing things for over ten years." I'm like, "What did you do? Did you? I mean, did he take one of those kids and take them to a civil, like, help them fight a civil rights case? You know, like it's 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 these people, like it's people like that that piss me off the most. Who are who are now going to say, "Yeah, I've been fighting." Okay, and I don't doubt that he's written letters or opposed certain policies, but he did nothing concrete. It, he was also one of the same people when, you know, uh, vote Biden, not Trump. They spent four years focusing on Trump when they could have been focusing on why people voted for Trump and maybe stop this, you know, whatever, seven years ago and started trying to right the ship. I totally agree with you. And now we're. But I want to say that you know, the average person is a coward. You know, they use the same tactics in this whole cult of woke, DEI, CRT, whatever you want to call it, this far left ideology. They use the same tactics on people that they used on us in Islam, right? It's the same, same cult mentality tactics. So, professors, politicians, journalists, even if they did feel like this is moving in the wrong direction or this is getting a little extreme or this is concerning me, they would not 
stick their neck out because they know that they're going to be eviscerated by the mob. And it, it requires for people to have a lot of courage, which isn't really as common as we would like it to be. Um, so yeah, it didn't, I think that's the reason why, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an extremely effective tactic to get people to shut up and get in line, right? This whole cancel culture, this whole um, demonizing people, you know, we've, we have a million stories to, to go on about that and to, to illustrate that fact, how a person can't speak the wrong word um, before they're, they're attacked by their own. Um, so I think that's why, especially in universities, you know, because, because I teach in a university as well and in Canada. So I have been watching this happen as well. It has been absolutely heartbreaking to see that the whole point of post-secondary university is to encourage critical thinking. And all we've been doing is encouraging coddling, safe spaces, um, you know, reducing the conversations down to just sound bites. Um, obviously, I, that wasn't happening in my classroom, but I can see the results of it from just the <clears throat> university culture in general. There's been some really horrible stories that people have shared with me, like this one guy from Iran was at York University in a gender studies class, and he started to talk about how hijab isn't a choice. <laughs> this is a man that grew up in a country where women are arrested over hijab, okay? And he was attacked so badly by his female classmates and his female professor that he was pulled out of the classroom and the professor had to like speak to him, you know, with, in hushed tones that he has to be careful not to be Islamophobic in the classroom. And he had to stand down and allow them to say that hijab was empowering and feminist in a gender studies classroom at York University in Canada. So that's that's the point we're at right now, you know, or that we were at um, for a long time. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to say that I think a lot more people saw what was happening, but just didn't have the courage to speak up. Yeah, but I'm not going to listen to those people now, and and I'm not going to listen to, you know, I don't care if they're making good points right now. As far as yeah. I'm concerned, their words have no meaning to me. Yeah. Um. You know, and I and I say this about okay, I know your friends, uh, friends with him, but someone like Sam Harris, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but you know he's put out like a couple lately he's put out some stuff about Islam and you know he's done it again. And I, fine. Yeah. What you're saying is true, but you missed the boat and he did the same thing with this woke garbage that people were that he was complaining about people with islam yeah i remember like okay the last election campaign in the u.s um they put out this stupid little animated thing because that's what the dei morons always do because they're te they're speaking to kids and they're little children yeah. in their heads and this little animated thing about how oh you're you know we have to make everyone uh have the same outcome like basically you know equal outcomes and all this mm -hmm. stuff and you know and he's like do people actually believe this and i remember him saying that it's like oh, you can't actually believe this and yet he was saying oh i've been speaking out against the woke it's like well if you don't know that people actually believe that then you haven't you haven't been paying attention and it's like i he was speaking out again you know, i'm gonna defend him because i love him but he was speaking out against <laughs> the woke however it is true that he did see Trump as the bigger issue. And you're right. He did not go to the core of why were people going towards this guy? You know, why were people thinking that he was the lesser of the two evils? Consider what is the problem with the Democratic Party? What is what was happening at that point on the left that just got worse and worse over time? It was literally a slippery slope at that point in 2016 or whatever, when, when Trump got voted in. Um, but he did see Trump as the bigger threat at the time. Of course, you and I disagree with him. Um, but I thought I felt that a lot of it had to do with the fact that he's American. You and I are removed from it. So I did not feel this 
emotional, visceral reaction that a lot of American people felt because it wasn't my country. So I kind of gave him that benefit of the doubt, but I, I certainly disagreed with thinking that Trump was the problem versus Trump was the symptom of the problem, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I, I should you know, maybe correct myself a little bit. Yes, he did speak out against the woke, some of it, but I don't think it was like someone, a Muslim, be like a video of a Muslim beating his wife and then just saying, oh, this is wrong. Not understanding anything about Islam, just yeah. that act is wrong. Yeah. And so that's where I saw Sam with the woke stuff. Like he didn't look into it the way he should have to see where it was. And there was a lot of people about it. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't want to play counterfactual for too long, but there's like the, the, the whole Russia gate stuff. There was almost nothing to it. Um, I mean, I think when it comes down to it, they shared some polling data, which is about like the most damning stuff. But I mean, you get polling data from everywhere. So like, what's the, old, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but wasted so much time on that. Yeah. So unless you were in the New York times or the Washington post or CNN or whatever, these big outlets, if you were like any sort of alternative media and you were opposed to Trump, I think you should have been focusing on what was wrong on your side. And no one wanted to do that. No one had the balls to do it. And it just, you know, it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. No, completely agree. So, okay. Now kind of like uh, the opposite side of this though, is your, your the title of your book, how your Western liberals empower radical Islam. So, that on the streets of Europe, um, you know, North America, all these pro protests going out. I mean, th there was one in Montreal where the guy was, he wasn't using euphemisms. He was just saying, go out and kill, you know, Israelis. Like it was, uh, um, but now it's spreading to other things. Like there was, I read an article yesterday, I think it was in France, where a bunch of teachers were now in hiding because they showed, um, they showed some pictures of, artwork renaissance in the renaissance art, and yeah. muslim kids yeah and muslim kids complained and now they're the teachers are getting death threats yeah. it's like okay well you know i think it was like 2016 or 2015 there's a delegation coming to rome from the middle yeah. east and they covered up all the naughty bits on the statues and the paintings i'm like you appease these people it was like uh, it was like you're appeasing nazis you're you're <laughs> right that that was an appeasement at that time to cover up those statues but i just to, to give a little bit more context to these 800 teachers, after what happened to Samuel Petit, the teachers are making a statement at this point. They're saying these Muslim students have rioted and their families have, make it, have made a big stink about the fact that we're sharing paintings in the classroom because they're nude paintings. It's an art history class. Like it's the same thing, similar thing happened in America where somebody... It was actually an Iranian professor that was sharing um, that painting. It was a Persian painting of Muhammad speaking to Gabriel. And then the Muslims got all up in arms um, because they were so angry that they would. Sh this Iranian professor would share a picture of Muhammad and the professor was let go. And the university released a statement saying that the feelings of the students supersedes academic freedom. So what's happening in France is kind of similar to that in that the professor was sharing these paintings in a classroom. It's not university this time. It's it's a, a secondary classroom. But the teachers are all sort of uniting and saying, we are not going to go back to work in solidarity with that teacher who is getting threats because they're trying to push the Ministry of Education to take these threats seriously, because it was not taken seriously and Samuel Petit was beheaded right in front of his school on his way home, walking home to his family. And you, in the UK, when there was a religious studies teacher who shared pictures of Muhammad again, and the students got all up in arms and their parents got all up in arms, and that teacher is now in hiding by himself. The other teachers, you know, the 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 teachers' college, the uh, the union, the you know his 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 representatives in in politics, nobody has supported him. And so in France, they are supporting each other. So they're not actually capitulating. 
they're actually making a, a show of solidarity and saying, you know, if you don't somehow deal with these students that are trying to control the education system in France, then we're going to sit this one out until you until you figure it out. Yeah, you make a joke about French people finally not surrendering, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> The French are doing it right. Honestly, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a real mess they got themselves into for a very long time. It is just mm -hmm. atrocious what's happening in France and it's to the point where you can't deny it. Like the conversation is front and center. Whereas in places like Canada, obviously in Montreal it's front and center right now, but most people in the Anglosphere of Canada are clueless, you know? Most people in America are clueless. It's 1% of the population, you know? But there's certain countries that are much smaller and their problem is much bigger and they can't pretend anymore. And France is one of those countries. Yeah. Okay. But Canada, like, so there's a, going back to Harvard. So there's a rabbi, uh, Rabbi Wolpe. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He used to, he's, he's debated Sam Harris and like uh, Hitchens and all that. Uh, and he's, he's a very reasonable guy. Yes. Okay. Fine. I, I can do a theological debate with him, but you know, very reasonable. And then, when this stuff all started coming out and then he just recently resigned from Harvard and he said, I, I oh, resigned yes. from Harvard because of, and because what's Harvard doing? Yeah. Oh, well we need more DEI now. It's like, no. Okay. So you want to use DEI to fight the anti-Semitism that DEI <laughs> created. Like, I mean, that, that, no, but that, that's, that's, that's what they're doing. Yeah. I guarantee you that's what, those are the conversations that are being, that are happening in Canada, in Ottawa, and in like provincial provincial legislatures because we know nothing else all our institutions are completely captured and um like yo so okay i think it was 2021 same thing you know hamas launches rockets israel retaliates then there was protests and i remember at that point there are there were people like Jewish people were being chased in the streets. So I saw footage from Germany, from England, from across the U S and then from Toronto and Montreal. Trudeau's first reaction was, Oh, let's not be Islamophobic. Yeah. And then, and then he's, Oh, we're going to have a, a, a thing on anti-Semitism. I guarantee you that conference of anti-Semitism that they had was all DEI based. And it was, I mean, I wasn't in there. I haven't seen anything from it, but just from, reading so much other stuff about some of these some of these things like they were they were guaranteed at one point anti-blackness came up in that conference and they weren't focused on it that's all and that's all they've been pushing i mean hell they they hired that guy laith maroof yeah to teach you know anti-racism to the cbc and the guy's talking about killing jews and when questioned about it he's like oh i only met white supremacist jews <laughs> i mean yeah. yo yeah i only met yo, zionists it, it's Let's. We're only gonna. No, but it's not. We're not gonna know, murder everybody. He, <laughs> we only just murder no, the bad he, people. He yeah. He didn't even say Zionist. He said white supremacist yeah. Jews because again, it comes down to this bullshit. Yeah, where but Jews I just have find whiteness. it hilarious how they like calling for the genocide of certain people is okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? As long as it's people that you also hate, like whether you're calling for the genocide of Zionist Jewish people, white supremacists, whatever it is, like if you're calling for the murder of people, you probably shouldn't be in that position. You know what I mean? Like that was his role. Yeah. But again, this is, this comes up. You can look at Kendi, which is a very, yeah. very, very watered down version of Fanon. Like, you know, the, the, the cure for past discrimination is present discrimination. The yeah. cure for present discrimination is future discrimination and Fanon, you know, the only way the oppressed can get can get over their trauma is by oppressing their oppressors. Horrible. I mean, hell, in, in the, the forward to his book, uh, The Wretch of the Earth, I think it was Sartre, if you read the forward into it, he talks about bathing in European blood. I mean, it's, That's you know, and it's, you know, and this is what these people are looking at. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, so by any means necessary. So, yes, it's, it's, it's allowed. And the other aspect of it was the, um, the Marcuse thing, the, the repressive tolerance. So you not only is it good enough to give marginalized people a voice, you have to actively repress mm -hmm. any voice that can cause them harm. So, I mean, you add those two things together and that's why you get this, 
you know, everyone's talking about, I'm going to stick with Canada for a little bit because it's just, everyone's talking about, oh, well, will we pull Poly- in there? Or some people are saying, okay, we need Bernier in there. Uh, I mean, you're deluding yourselves. It doesn't matter who you vote in that position. If you don't fix all the underlying stuff that goes with government. So that means gutting our civil servants. That means gutting DEI out of every government office. You know, that means going back to a enlightenment based system. And so it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not, it's, it's just, I'm just like, well, what, you know, you started talking about like, where do we go after this? Like, which direction are we going to take? Cause it could eat the pendulum can swing the other way mm-hmm. and you can have, you know, something right wing. That's just horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, there are a lot of people who, okay. The, the woke lost, you know, that was, that was the whole enterprise was we don't like enlightenment values. Let's have a politics based on identity. I mean, Crenshaw said it in like her, her seminal paper there, uh, mapping the margins. That's how she closed it off. I mean, that was being the whole thing. Like Derek Bell, CRT started off as a critique of civil rights. And, you know, so they started off with that. So the right's going to be saying, well, well, fine, we'll do it our way then. And like that, that's, that's where I'm at. Like, I don't think like all these people who are, oh, even in the States, oh, in the next election, we need to vote Trump back in because he's going to fix this, or mm-hmm. we need to vote DeSantis because he's going to fix this. It's like, no, stop looking for a goddamn savior. Yeah. And just, Get out there and fix your stuff. Yeah, uh, I yes. agree with you. Even if we do, I mean, miraculously, even if people do start to see the issues and start to try to unwind it now, it's going to be like 20 years before things start to change because it's so deeply embedded into the minds of the young. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so this is like, this is their reality. This is all they know. Like the, the you know, from Gen X onwards, like they might be able to just like revert back to, you know, enlightenment values. But, you know, the TikTok generation, yeah, this is this is what they have. This is what they're born and bred on. And, and, yeah. you're, and I, mean, I also, and the, okay. I, sorry, I just wanted to also ahead, agree with you and add a little um, example to what you were saying about Jewish people were are now realizing that they should have been included in this oppression Olympics. And that was the problem. Like they're identifying that as the problem. Like, oh, okay, well, we, as if you just add us to this whole um, DEI thing that you've got going on, then everything's going to be okay. Just make sure that we are included as one of the oppressed, even that we're not white. So we need to also be included there. So we're, we're with the goodies. And then just keep the white people as the baddies and then everything will be okay. Like, of course, that's still okay. bullshit, you know, but they're not seeing it. They just, it n- none of the people that are on the, none of them are recognizing the hypocrisy of it. Like they they use words like reverse racism as if that exists. You know what I mean? Like they, they're not seeing the, the, the demonization of white people and how that in and of itself is a problem. But no, they're saying, no, no, no. The problem is that we are being included as white people. Yeah, but I mean, I think that I think that's from like places like, you know, um, Jews for progressive values and places like, you know, like the far left Jewish organizations. But the problem with that as well, even the ones who are don't quite aren't quite, you know, indoctrinated into the woke stuff, but saying, oh, well, maybe we should ha- include Jews in the DEI stuff. They don't realize that you're still going to be ranked. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, like that's why BIPOC is BIPOC. It's black, indigenous, and other people of color, mm-hmm. right? Now, some people say IBPOC because they want indigenous first, um, but there is still that ranking. I mean, there was a conference, and I keep bringing this thing up because it was just so stupid. There was a conference in Toronto during COVID. It was all online. Brown complicity and white supremacy. Yeah. How brown people, you know, like, so... No, it doesn't matter if Jews are included. You're still going to be low man on the totem pole because you're not high oppressed enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, like, I know you're in academia and I, your focus was more on Islam. And I was I was more just curious, why am I getting called a white supremacist for criticizing Islam? And that, that's <laughs> my, that was like the only reason I started getting into this because I'm like, this makes no sense. Yeah. 
and I just wanted it to make sense. But the like the the DEI stuff, like this, I I don't see these people changing. They they they, they have nothing else. They yo know, like if you want to if you want to leave Islam, I'll go speak to the imam. Mm. You know <laughs> if you, if you if you question anything, it's like. Oh, we'll just go back and and it's it's the, it's the same thing. They're just going back and looking in their t- religious texts mm-hmm. and seeing what they can do, and it's they're going to come up with the same bullshit. I, like I, I, you know. And if I might add, it just frustrates me. The, the it fulfills white people. I have to say, like that's the reason why they're not pushing back against this too, is because it fulfills their need for white guilt and self flagellate self flagellation. It's like this whole Christian idea of the original sin, you know, they, they embrace this ideology even more than the quote unquote people of color. Cause I hate that term. Um, but they are, if they were to denounce it, then they would be called racists or whatever. So they embrace it instead. And I think a lot of them don't even want to denounce it. A lot of them really do feel like we deserve this, you know, like this, this, they do feel that it is time for, uh, oh God, that's another Christian term. Um, I keep on thinking com- comeuppance, but that's not the word. It's that French term of, uh, or French, what am I talking about? Christian term of, oh God, what's the word obeyed? Help me. When you are, when you do something, Repent. Yes, it's time for okay, them to repent. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, there is some of that. But and I mean, again, if you look at enough of this stuff. So when CRT first started coming out, so I mean it, it it critical race theory got its name in like 89, there was a conference and that's when they came up with the term. But then almost right away you had like you had this guy Randall Kennedy, he was a uh, professor at Harvard, I believe. And he criticized it. He was another black professor and he was criticizing Derek Bell and he was criticizing his stuff. But, you know, the, the, whatever the, I, I, it wasn't just whites in general, but like the well meaning, the, the well meaning liberals on the left yes. stuck with Derek Bell because, oh, well, like you said, oh, this just makes us feel better. This sounds better. Like instead of saying, okay, no, this is, this thing is wrong, but, you know, they're, it might bring up some good points, but what you're talking about is like how you want to address those points is wrong. They were too afraid to say that. And so that, I mean, that comes back to um, Jonathan Rauch's book, Kindly Inquisitors, where he talks about this stuff. And he said, it's the humanitarian threat yeah. to liberal science where it's like, you know, don't you want to fight racism? Don't you want to mm-hmm. fight homophobia? And you pull at people's heartstrings and it it comes along. Yeah. Well, I, I want to get back to something else you said there about the education. So this was, again, this was one of, you know, when I started looking at all this stuff and I just started seeing how widespread it was, I just started, I started speaking to people all over the place. If you look at the education system, so K through 12, around 2010, you can see it in some high schools and some districts across the U.S. The earliest I know of it in Canada, and it might have been here before, uh, was I saw some textbooks from 2013. I mean, obviously, I saw them when I got back, but I saw some textbooks from 2013 in middle schools that were using this stuff in Canada. So it's, you know, like when I started looking at this, I'm like, okay, these are woke madrasas. Now. Yeah. You know, you might have a kid who goes through a madrasa who won't join ISIS and Taliban, mm-hmm. but he'll be one of those 98% of Muslims in the UK who think homosexuality should be punishable by imprisonment. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they won't go for the death, but they'll at least say imprisonment. And so, that's what you created yeah so you know and again another example i use a lot is this place in new New york city dalton academy k through eight so like something like forty five thousand dollars a year to send your kid there okay they took kids from grade three to grade eight and this they started this in 2015 they split them up by affinity groups you know so which is basically just racial groups they sent letters home to kid with kids so the parents can tell the school what race the child uh, identifies with, especially for mixed race kids. Then once they separated the kids up, so all the black kids, they were told you're oppressed. You've been oppressed. There's nothing you can do about it. You'll always be oppressed. And it's the fault of white. Oh. 
And they told that to all the non-white kids. They told the white kids, you are the oppressors. You've oppressed people. You know, you've done all this evil. And so kids being kids, they started going online and looking up things like, what's good about my race? What's bad about this race? And they turned into like, I mean, you know, they were just the biggest ethno-nationalists out there. Mm -hmm. These little kids, they turned that school so racist. They're still having race problems right now. Mm -hmm. And then you have these these little mindless automatons go off to college Mm -hmm. already thinking like this. Then you get, you know, what school was it recently? It might've been Princeton. Um, They took over the, the administration office, put in all these demands. And one of the demands was that none of them will get into trouble. And it was just like, and then like, no one, yeah, I I can't remember what it was just recently. It was in the last week or so Mm -hmm. they took over the administration office and like, Again, you have university presidents capitulating to this god nonsense, mm-hmm. and it's. But I'm like, okay, you've, you know, you, you got ten years at least of K through twelve kids. You've got thirty years of humanities students who've been thinking like this. So, like, yeah, when you said it's it's a twenty year shift, um, I was at a, I was at a meeting with a bunch of parents. Um, there's an organization in Canada, Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like, um sort of like fair but it started before fair it was just a more of a um um like it was more like a groundswell than fair was even and it was just kind of grew up out of it and i and i said that to them because a lot of them again a lot of them there were like oh we have to wait for the next election i said you don't wait for anyone to save you it's it's a you have a generational fight i don't think a lot of people understand that you have to undo a generation's worth of indoctrination to people you know i joke like there, there aren't enough Starbucks for all these, you know, gender theorists and um, work at know, critical race theorists or war- <laughs> yeah, to become barista. I, I, yeah. I'm sorry, they're not fit for any other purpose. Yeah, like what are these people going to do? Well, they, they're going to be presidents of the, universities. <laughs> We've seen that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're going to rise but, to the top, and they're going to be the ones making the decisions. So. Yeah, let's hope that something changes between now and then that they'll somehow, you know, read a book, do some research beyond TikTok, start to think and use their brains before they're in any positions of power. Um, but right now it is quite scary because they, they're they not going to work at Starbucks. They're going to be running our governments. They're going to be running our corporations. They're going to be running our universities. Whether yeah. they're equipped I mean, I, okay, or not, I, whether they, whether it's not merit-based, yeah. right? Okay, look, I'm not naive enough to think that, okay, this, a lot of the people I see, you know, and I started seeing it maybe about a year, two years ago, like, so right around 2021 or maybe beginning of 2022. Oh, well, we've reached peak woke. Oh, well, this is the end of woke. Oh, see, the New York Times wrote this great article, so it's the end of woke. I'm like. You guys are George W. Bush going to Iraq saying mission accomplished. Yeah. That's exactly what you are. And it's, I still don't think people see the scope of this. And I don't think they realize that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. You had some university presidents fired, but did you fix anything in the background? Mm-hmm. Yo. Yeah. Some guy at the CDC got fired because they said we should have race-based vaccinations, but did you fix the background? Like I do, if somehow or other, some of these institutions start fixing themselves. And they'd say, okay, like, let's say if Harvard decides tomorrow, okay, we're going to, which they're not because the board of trustees said they're not going to fire the president and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But let's just say they did. Okay, well, let's let's take Penn because they fired their president and the head of the, uh, the chairman of the board quit. It doesn't happen overnight. And A, if they got, like, if they got all those positions, let's say Penn does that. And that leads some other schools to start doing the same thing. If they got all those positions, then they say, we're going to follow this this roadmap where are all those people going to go um i mean there were some corporations as well i think this was in 2022 they put out a um a statement it was a bunch of people on wall street that you know we won't hire any of these dei or anything like that if you've if you've got a, if you've had a course and so it was so i mean that was kind of you know heartening to see um, I don't know what came of it. Like I, I actually spoke to a, there was a professor from the California state system where him and a bunch of other professors 
in the California state system got together to push back against this. And I said, why don't you go to these corporations and say, look, we, you know, we're doing this in our schools. We want to push back against this. Why don't you say you'll hire from us instead of from them? And to just put that as the focus, like, I mean, at the bottom, at the end of the day, it comes out of, you know, I don't care how, how much of a commie you say you are. It comes down to your bottom line, like how much money you have. And, you know, if enough corporations say to the universities, we're not going to hire your graduates, then what's the point of going to that university then? And so it, it comes down to a bottom line. I, I, I mean, but again, I say like, what are you going to do with these people? Like, what are you, the universities are in such a bind, like it, if Harvard admits that, yeah, you know what, all our uh, critical race theory courses were garbage, all the anti-racism courses that we taught were garbage, all our whiteness studies was was garbage, our DEI infrastructure is based on, you know, a foundation of sand, and it's, then they've opened themselves up to huge lawsuits because why did you give me a degree in this mm -hmm. bullshit? Mm -hmm. You know, like, why did I pay $70,000 a year to go to Harvard to get a degree in gender studies when now you're telling everyone it's absolute garbage? And it's, but they have to do that. I, I don't care if Harvard goes under. I don't care if any of all, all the IVs go under, you know, let the small state schools that aren't pushing this shit pick up the slack. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't see them. I see them doubling down. I think that's probably more likely. They might slowly, the students themselves might start to realize this is not a, a useful degree for me or these are not useful courses for me. So they'll stop registering for them. And so then the university will stop, um, you know, putting them in their in their calendars. But at the end of the day, a university, especially a university like Harvard, really, it just runs like a corporation. It's bums and seats. Mm -hmm. It's make the customers happy. So if there is a need for these courses, then they're just like, if there's a, a, a demand for these courses, then they're just going to do what the students want to do. Like we see this all the time that the tail wags the dog in these universities. Like, when that there was that Harvard professor, this is back in 2015, a Harvard professor, a law professor, um, I was in a conference and she was sharing that in her class, she's not allowed to talk about the legalities around rape. She's not allowed to talk about rape charges because that's too triggering for her law students. And so she she genuinely cannot even approach the topic, which is incredibly dangerous. You know that we're we're <laughs> law students from Harvard yeah. aren't going to get that piece of the curriculum. Okay. Um, I think I know who do. you're talking about. Yeah, we just let I think the I know students talking about it. lead. So if the students start to say we don't yeah. want this garbage anymore, then the universities will react. But the universities won't make the decision yeah. initially. Yeah, but like just a little aside on that law professor, it's. Uh, Mari Matsumi, I think her name was. Perhaps I honestly um, can't remember. Uh, no, because I, I remember her talking about it. Then, but in her case, I have no sympathy for. Her. She built this golem and it came back to bite her in the ass. Mm -hmm. She teaches critical race theory. Mm -hmm. She she taught critical legal scholarship. Okay, she taught the underlying garbage that led up to this. So you know what suck it up yeah i think a lot of them really were like you said good like well-meaning and i say this in my book like you know the, the best you know the, the road to hell is you know paved with good intentions a lot of them really were well-meaning thinking that they're doing good things and then it reaches a certain point where they start to recognize oh my god this is actually not good you know they just didn't have the foresight to to see where it was leading. I mean, not that I'm making excuses for her. I don't even know who she is, but I'm just saying in general, I think a lot of people got caught up with this in the beginning. It's honestly, it's like the pronoun thing, you know, people think, well, it's, it's harmless, you know, and then things just keep on getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. It, it, it's just ridiculous. Look, I don't want to keep you too, too much longer, but, um, where do we go from here? Like, what would you like to see happen? 
Well, because I am a hopeless and eternal optimist, I am looking at the bright lights that have been happening. And I'm trying to convince myself that there is hope. So one of the great things that has happened recently is the White House has disavowed care, which I think was a really important thing to happen. Um, people like, uh, what's his name? Something Hassan. Oh, I forgot his fucking name. But that Islamist guy that had shows on CNN, um, he's just gotten demoted. Oh, oh, God, 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 God. I, I know you're talking about, uh, um, Mehdi Hassan. Yes, that's right. He was on MS, uh, MSNBC. MSNBC, yeah. sorry, my, yeah, that's right. Um, so there's, 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 Certain things like that are happening in the direction of the Islamist stuff. But as far as the Marxist stuff or the DEI and CRT and all that, oh, man, that's going to be a, a that's going to take longer. <laughs> you know, like that's not that's not as obvious right now to a lot of people. It's easier for them to see the problem with the Islamist stuff because we have so many Hamas supporters being so blatant. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easy to see, oops, that's a problem, but we don't have enough, <clears throat> the, you know, obviously the, the anti-Semitism coming out is, is really highlighting a, a lot of, you know, the problems in our institutions, but I think that it needs to cost them something first. Like they need to recognize it needs to hurt them before they can say, oh, wait, this isn't good. We, we should stop this. So however it's going to hurt them, yeah. you know, that whole go woke, go broke, what you were saying about the bottom line, 100% agree. If it starts to hurt their bottom line, then they'll start to change. But it has to be, there, there has to be a reason. It has to reach a critical mass for, for things to tip. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you there. But one thing I will add to that is, okay, Fareed Zakari, everyone's talking about all this mm. great, op-ed he didn't see it in order I'm like okay fine yes that was good but until he says i helped push this yeah i was yeah. wrong yeah you know there are a lot of people who are just all of a sudden gonna switch yeah. and say oh see i was against it and i don't want those people on my side because yeah. you're liars yeah. you're dishonest and, cowards. and you're just going with the flow yeah yeah agreed you know i don't want them on my side and i want them to say i i want them to hurt as well we were wrong we were bullshit. We got this completely wrong. Now we see it. And then fine. Move on. I don't like, but like I said, I, I, you know, when I say I want them to hurt, I don't want, I don't want any canceling or anything. No, of but you BS, want them to but, feel the pain of, of the fact that they were yeah. engaged in this fuckery, that they are the ones that they yeah. have to take responsibility of own it, take ownership mm -hmm. of that. But they mm -hmm. won't. They will not. I promise mm -hmm. you, they will deny, deflect. They will not take ownership. The, the best that we can hope for is that they won't continue down that same path, but for them to, they, they will, they will lie about it even. And they will say like the example that you were giving um, and they will say, yeah, actually I, I did have my concerns for a while now, you know, this is what people do. There are yeah. people in these positions where they just have more ego than integrity. Um, we won't see that happen and i'm actually okay with it as long as things move in the right direction because you know we it's the same thing this happens with feminists all the time like with the whole woman life freedom movement <clears throat> and things like that like they or even the the israeli women um like you said it takes them so long to finally speak up and when they do it's half-assed but even that i'll take it because at least you're making the right noises. At least you're moving in the right direction. I know I'm not going to get an apology. I know I'm not going to get a, a, you know, a mea culpa, an understanding, a, a whatever. But it's fine. Let's just let's just move forward. Yep. And on that, I think it's a good place to stop. So thank you very much again, Yasmin, for coming on. You know, I know it's kind of a little bit, a little bit of a rambling talk, but I think oh, it was awesome. a few things. It was fun. I love your talk. I love talking to you because it's like a real talk. It's not just like asking me questions. Do you know what I mean? But it's like a real conversation. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
anyways, take care. And thanks again for coming on. Yeah, you too. And thanks everyone. For, take care. Thanks everyone for listening.